Hey y'all, it's the Home Ec Lady here in Colorado, United States. Can you find that on a map? Today I'm using up scraps to make a map quilt. So let me show you how I did it. I started with a map outline of the United States projected on a wall, and I traced out just a few states at a time into regions. The United States is made up of four informal regions, which are the South, the Northeast, the Midwest, and the West, which of course are debated by Americans because Americans love to argue about petty things. Then I grabbed my bag of scraps, a Sharpie, and some fusible interfacing to get started. I cut out the states and prepared them one at a time. So I started by tracing the states onto a fusible interfacing with a peel off back. You're going to trace it on the paper side, but make sure you flip it over so it's backwards when you trace it and make sure you label it so you don't forget. You can test your abbreviation knowledge if you have such a thing or try to learn them if you don't. You're going to cut out the interfacing around the state, not directly on the border, and then iron it to the back of the fabric. Don't mess up on that. You can't recover from it. And then cut the state out along the borders once it's fused to the fabric. I didn't use a color theme for this quilt, but you are going to want to think about the placing of colors and also pay attention to the print direction when you're cutting the states. Unless you want your prints upside down, then go ahead and live your life because some people say it's a free country. The next step is a lot like putting a puzzle together. I'm going to start with the western states because they have straighter borders and they're easier to match. The borders on these states are different than those of the states east of the Mississippi River. As settlers moved Native Americans from their homes and took over the West, more policies and ordinances dictated the borders of states as they were added into the Union after the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. And during this era of American history, many endured long, dangerous journeys into the unknown West with a dream in their rugged hearts and the hope of manifest destiny in their prayers. Pioneers were looking for free land that had been offered by the government, prospectors were looking for gold and silver, and a large group walked to Utah in search of freedom from religious persecution that they had suffered in the states of New York and Illinois. I'll use small scrap sheets of fabric to assemble just one region at a time so it's easy to handle. I think it's best if you don't use anything heavier than a medium weight fusible for this because it gums up the needle and it makes it really hard to sew. With a lighter weight fusible, it's also easier than secession to pull out a bad state and replace it. This area of the United States belonged to Mexico until the Treaty of Hidalgo in 1848. This is when the Mexican government was forced to cede more than 50% of its territory to the United States after a war that's largely seen by historians as a selfish land grab. Here in the Oregon Territory, history tells us there was a group of men in the company of a Native American woman who were portaging loaded canoes over mountain passes and collecting samples of plants and animals they could send back to President Jefferson in the name of science. The history of this area witnessed the incoming of Spanish explorers and they were searching for everything from gold to the fountain of youth and they were spreading the word of Jesus right along with deadly diseases like smallpox. These explorers brought death to the native populations in large numbers and those who were left were driven out by government policies that uprooted them from homelands and sent families into unknown territory through force. Here in the Northeast region of the United States, there's a history of settlement by Europeans who came here seeking freedom from religious persecution in their home countries. Americans are guaranteed a separation of church and state because these settlers came here to practice their extreme religions in peace. The Founding Fathers agreed that imposing a national religion or basing laws on religion would be a violation of personal freedoms to practice any or no religion without persecution. Well, so long as your religion doesn't break any other laws like human sacrifice and, in some cases, drug use. In the 1800s, this area was dominated by railroads and factories that changed the way people lived and provided needed resources during the Civil War. The Missouri Compromise of 1820 established that states north of the 36th parallel would be non-slave states, separating the north and south along the Maryland-Pennsylvania border called the Mason-Dixon Line. Although it should be noted that for a long time before the Civil War heated up, one of the largest slave trading centers in the world was located in Rhode Island. That is, until international trading of slaves was outlawed in the early 1800s and plantation owners came up with other ways to replenish their labor forces. 
Okay, back to sewing for a second. To connect the regions together, I'm gonna overlap the backing and begin ironing states across the overlap to secure them. Sometimes the borders don't match exactly, and that's okay, you just have to give it a trim. This area of the United States around the Great Lakes attracted fur trappers in the 1600s. They're in search of beavers, which had been hunted to near extinction in Europe. You see, top hats were all the rage with high society, and I have to note that these hats were frequently lined with mercury, which poisoned the wearer and is the origin of the term Mad Hatter. As I was putting the larger regions together, I noticed that Missouri's shape wasn't quite right. And that's okay, it's easy to fix. I'm gonna get out my fusible interfacing and place it over the blank space. And then on the glue side, I'm gonna trace out the white space to get the perfect shape. And then I'll do the process that I did before by ironing the facing to the fabric and cutting it out. And then it brought the whole map together with the perfect size state. All right, all the mainland states have been assembled now and the outside borders are trimmed. You can see from the back how I pieced together all the different scraps to make the regions fit. I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch to sew in the borders between the states. And one thing that I'm gonna do is change up my thread while I do that so there's multiple colors of borders on the states to give it a little depth. There's, a lot of the colors here are kind of similar anyway, so I wanna break it up. And then I sewed in the Mississippi River in blue because that's appropriate. Uh, my map is rather large, so as I sew, I have to readjust and pivot within the machine. And if you do that, you need to make sure that you always have your needle all the way down in the fabric before you move it or pivot in any way. And this will help you keep your place and make sure that your thread doesn't get tangled. And this is where the lightweight fusible will also come in handy because sewing through all the layers can cause the machine to get a little fussy. I sewed in all of the borders of the states with a zigzag, but I left the entire perimeter of the outside raw because um, I'm going to attach it to another backing. This is the third time I've made one of these US quilts, and the second one that I made, I placed the states a little outside of each other and then sewed each of them to the backing individually using a straight stitch on the machine. And if I were to make another one, I would do that again because it was a bit easier to manage than doing a zigzag stitch around things like the Chesapeake Bay and the Louisiana Delta. Um, so the first one that I made, I actually hand sewed the states on individually using a blanket stitch. And if you wanna do this, definitely get yourself a thimble because this is not one of the techniques that I would ever use again. I got a nice sheet from the thrift store and I cut it to size before adjusting my map onto it. I do wanna place it a little high on the sheet so that I can fit Alaska and Hawaii on the bottom. And this reminds me that I actually had a student ask me once why Alaska was so cold if Mexico was so hot. Think about it. To make sure the map laid flat on the backing, I smoothed it out with my hands and placed a pin in the very center of the map. And then working east and west, I pinned the states down flat like a belt right through the center. And then I went around the perimeter of the map and using my quilt pins secured all of the edges around the states. I do happen to really like maps, so I, I did a map. But this same technique can be used to do other pictures and graphics as well. I think a city map or a holiday theme would be really cute for a hanging decoration. I then took the entire blanket to the machine and ran a zigzag stitch around the outside perimeter, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it was not fun. I did manage to get it complete with only one mistake that had to be ripped out, so that's a win for me. I think I placed just enough pins on the outside to keep the pieces in place for a nice flat seam, but like any quilting project, it is incomplete until it has my blood on it. Good grief. I attached a binding from scrap fabric that I had to give it a nice finish, and I also added Seward's Folly and the islands forcibly annexed by the U.S. in 1898. And so here it is, the whole ridiculously messed up United States on one blanket or wall hanging that you can save as an heirloom for future generations who may never know the U.S. once looked like this. Thanks for joining me today. I do hope you're leaving inspired. Please like and subscribe because I'd love to see you again and take care. Don't forget to vote. I'll see you next time. Bye.